What's going on my Welty family and welcome back. Today's lesson is going to be land versus no land on a 16 schedule 80 pipe TIG root pass, okay? A lot of people have been asking about this, so I had the honors to go to St. Petersburg, Florida with Bob Moffitt and me and him are doing demos on both of these, land versus no land. So let's get to it. Welcome to Weld.com. I'm Bob Moffat. have Mr. Hamar Gio from WeldTube South Coast Welding Academy from Houston today and we're going to do a little discussion here about, uh, actually we're going to get into a little argument here about yes, we what's are. up, you know, we yeah. get these comments, root face, land, however you want to describe it, versus feathered edge, mm -hmm. you know. Exactly. Um, exactly. You know, I, I'm not saying I've done it all over the years, but I've seen a lot and, and, and the fittings that we get, you know, some of them are inconsistent, especially mm -hmm. when you get into like concentric and eccentric elbows, you get that back bevel and you mm -hmm. get exactly. an inconsistent root face, but every fitting comes in with a face already mm -hmm. machined on it. Exactly. You know? What do you, I've so, so people, you know, do, do they grind them all off? You know, I mean, that's that's the deal. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm not about all that time and everything, but just a standard fit up. I like to prep the pipe. And for me, I've always used like a 16th to a 332, yeah. just something because it that mass to me is like that chill effect and it helps me control uh, the amount of penetration. I like that reinforcement. Which I understand. I understand so, that for sure. So you you're more of the feathered edge type I'm, guy. I'm I mean. more of the, the feathered edge. So like when it comes to stick welding or anything like that, I do use a landing, you know, sixteen to three thirty two. But when it comes to Hilly Arc and my experience, you know, just the the old timers that, that taught me as well, they say no land. But at the end of the day, uh land versus no land, we're about to check it out right now. We're about to see, give it a test. But at at the end of the day, when I see this, if it's sharp here, I feel like when I burn, you know, when I back feed, it, it hits the walls regardless, you know. But for a landing, sometimes that my personal uh, preference, when I see it, when I'm welding, it doesn't hit the walls as much, right? It stays on the landing. Maybe I'm not running hot enough, you know, so who knows? But at the end of the day, me personally, I just like no land, but we're going to put them to the test. So, so let's do that. does it matter on alloy carbon steel versus stainless uh, do you, you you just always feathered edge always feathered edge uh any if i'm willing hilly arc um like i said stick mig flux core whatever the case may be i do use a landing but for carbon steel alloys uh Hasteloy, mono whatever the case may be i use no landing at all cool so dip keyhole back feet, cool. same thing so you may convert me today. I don't know. We'll um, see. I mean, we'll see. We'll <laughs> I mean, see. you might convert me. Hey, I'm here to. I'm here to learn, man. I, we did a cool deal down in Houston, and, and uh, that was a great event you guys put I on down there that. too. That Thanks, was sir. that was, and I'm Thanks, honored sir. to be a part of that and help judge and all that stuff. Those kids did not make it easy on us, did they? Oh, no, sir. <laughs> that was kind of brutal. Yeah, that was some, some good got stuff. Got some good hands. Got some good hands. So you know, we're we're here to learn. We're here to share the knowledge and everything. So. I'm not going to ask you what happened in the airport last night. No. Why you had all those uh, air marshals and stuff. There's around. no need for all that. Okay. <laughs> well, let's prep some. Uh, let's prep some tubes here. Uh, I'll clean the inside, normal. Yeah. And uh, we'll do a we'll do a face on half of it. And we'll leave uh, One we'll no, leave the other yeah, face. No landing. Uh, feathered, feathered edge, edge. sharp. Okay. Well, Get some gear on. Let's do let's it. Do it. <laughs> All right, Mr. Hamar, got you all cleaned up here inside yeah, and out. Didn't really get into the chew that mill scale off of there, but I did get it back just a little bit. But the main thing we were talking about was <clears throat> I want to, you know, I'm going to do my thing like I norm normally have. One sixteenth, three thirty second. That's not three thirty second. That's that's just a sixteenth of root face yeah. or land, about 16 technically. Here left you with the feathered edge. That's on my side uh, right Now we're just gonna, I've got one bridge tack or I've got one tack down in there at 12 o'clock and I'm just gonna kind of adjust fit, Most give definitely. you what you want. Definitely. And uh, we'll kind of go from there. And I believe we were gonna do this in 6G. 6G position. Okay, let will figure out, get these boys situated on the camera angle so they can see the inside of this route. But, uh, you know, again, I, 
we've been through this hundreds of times, mm -hmm. me and you, I know we have. And of course, you always get these different fits. Some mm -hmm. shrink, some don't. Most definitely. Most definitely. But the whole deal is, you know, you're on sharp feathered edge. Absolutely no root face. I'm on the 116th to 332 face or whatever. So uh, multiple ways to go at this. Um, I like to do that little back feed thing, especially mm -hmm. coming off the bottom. I always, exactly. li always like mine. I don't want anything in the bottom. Mm -hmm. Anything, I, you know, unless there's a, a fit tack down there or something to keep exactly. it from slamming shut if it's exactly. a lot of weight on it or something. Um, but I just want it all open so that I can see, you yeah, know. Yeah. So I've always kind of put mine at 12, 10, and 2 and left this whole yeah, thing. Whole bottom open. Right. And you don't you do a, you do a two tack thing sometimes don't yeah, you? Yeah, like what I like to do when I fit this up, like you know, Bob has his personal preference which works as well. But me personally, I like to just throw two bridge tacks here, leave the bottom open and the top open. Uh, only so, because so your bridge tacks being at three and nine. Three and nine, and then having six and twelve, uh, six and twelve uh, open. So oh, okay. What I do is I okay. Quarter, I quarter so it. since they're bridge tacks. You're not having to bump into them. Exactly. Less so, yep. so I break them off just one time instead right. of two. Yeah. And then you're up and going. Okay. Because exactly. there's times I've seen guys try to bump into a tack up here at three and nine, like down inside. Mm -hmm. And when they come up to it, what happens? Leave that little cup mm -hmm. thing in there. Exactly. It doesn't get that full pin, no reinforcement. It's, exactly. you know, they break the wall down, but it's like flat. It's real flat, exactly. So. But, uh, Bob, what kind of gap? We got here, brother. 532. Um, I like the loose. I like the loose 532. I like the loose 532 316s. Nice. You know, nice. and uh, I just feel more comfortable with it, so I can feed the eighth inch wire. We got. Is this eighth? Did that's you? One eighth. How do you know? Did you check it's, it? I can smell it. Yep, that's eighth. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> let me check this. Let me check this out. Uh, it's uh, five, the loose 532. Oh, it's ER70S6. Mm -hmm. All right. And what amps we running between 110, uh, 20? Well, we're running on the uh, pedal. We're running on the pedal, the pedal. you know. All so right. I'm I'm gonna guess and say with this type fit, you're probably gonna be slightly lower because you're on the feathered edge. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna guess and say I'm gonna be running about 85, 90, okay. possibly. I don't know. Check it while I'm going, okay. and we'll we'll see. All right. So. Well, let's go ahead and tack this up in a 6G position and go to town. All right, let's All do right. it. Sounds it. Okay, Kamara, I got you. Uh, I went, we went ahead and tacked up here. We did your bridge tack over here on this side. Um, you like the gas lens. Yes, you sir. like the free hand. I noticed yes, you've got that technique where you're resting three fingers on yes, there. Sir. Hey, I've been doing that, by the way, and it's comfortable. It's comfortable. I've always been that, you know, I did that one thumb thing, and, and uh, I get up a little ways, and I just rest the cup in there and walk away. But uh, I've done that a couple times, and it's, it's really pretty cool. Uh, we're running off the Dynasty today. We got you set up at 110 amps, eighth inch E3 tungsten. We've got uh, about 15 cubic feet an hour. So, what else? Turn and burn. Turn and burn. All Three right. 16s gap. Uh, no landing uh, on my side. I'm gonna start at six o'clock. Gonna stop around nine o'clock right here. I got a bridge tech on this side, and uh, after that. Uh, try to finish it out or I'm gonna let Bob take over he's gonna do his side and we'll just quarter it out and then we'll go from there uh, but at the end of the day let's see what it does let's do it let's do it so right now I'm running at 110 amps just like Bob put me on I have no landing at all Hitting both walls. Slowly feeding. It's all about constant feed. Constant feed. Using that filler wire as a heat sink. Yes, sir. Drawing that reinforcement on the inside. That's yes, what sir. I always I'm like always to pushing. see is reinforcement on the bottom side. Now, I like to run at 110 amps, but it's all preference, guys. You know, 90 amps, whether it be 100 amps, whatever the case may be, whatever is most comfortable for you, that's what you do.
Lamar, have you ever had those gaps where you got to kind of chase the wire back and forth? Oh, and yeah, brother. <laughs> make sure I don't, you... I don't miss those. Uh. And when you're feeding this filler wire, okay, don't be too forceful with it. Be light with it, okay? Because if you be forceful, you're going to push too much, you're going to get cold wire or chop wire, whatever you want to call it. But getting close to the bridge tag. Right now I'm just pushing, pushing, pushing. stop right here at the bridge I'm gonna let Bob take over because we it's a little fit up adjustment we did so I'm gonna stop right here thing up boy nice That's, all right then. okay um, man you did a really good run on there I appreciate it. Man. Uh, Thank you, sir. I, kind of, I noticed, you know, that feathered edge is like weeping up on that tall side, kind of cutting, but mm. put that wire in there and it's like a heat sink and you got it filled in there. So you were coming off here like like your three fingers. Yeah, three fingers, uh, index finger and thumb over. All right. I come all the way through. So, okay. but uh, like I said, when I use the uh, no landing at all, you saw that I was just using that filler rod to make that reinforcement. It was a constant yeah. push. I, I kind of yeah. do the same thing. I'm not pushing, and I think you mentioned keep it light. Yeah, keep you know, it light, where it's just yes. balanced on mm -hmm. the leading edge. I think that's definitely. what a lot of people do. We had a guy at work when we were doing boilers, and we had to nickname him Nails because he would accidentally push every now yeah, and then. Yeah. And got, you know, I mean, it, top wire. I don't top know wire. how. Sometimes I don't understand how he passed X-ray because mm -hmm. uh, he left some chunks in there that were kind of questionable. But I kind of do the same thing. I like to do that leading edge thing. Again, I have like a 1 16th root face, mm -hmm. which is no big deal. And yeah, I've actually I mean, welded them heavier than that. Uh, again, you know, with that good gap in there. But I went ahead and switched back over to a standard collet. Uh, Why is that, Bob? I just, you know, here's what I like to do on coming off the, you, you use the three fingers. Yes, sir. I'm going to use one thumb. And, and I'm going to kind of come up here a little bit until I feel comfortable. All right. And then I go ahead and rest the cup in here and then, and, go. And then walk away. Which makes sense, brother. Makes sense. I mean, you know, and then comfortable, I... Comfortable, comfortable. Yeah. And then I'll change up to uh, the larger diameter cups, even the gas lens when I come out of it. Just just one of those deals, you know? Yeah, most definitely. Whatever, wherever it yeah. works <clears throat> You know, you get comfortable with stuff that works. You know, our stuff was always... Um, doing those big boilers and stuff mm -hmm. and it's just you get you get in some weird positions well, and you're locked me. in and you so in any event uh let's give this a go and see, see what happens here I'll, see how I'll, uh, i don't have anything in the way no sir so we just kind of we, we did our thing you got your bridge tack yeah. over there so i'm gonna bump this on bottom all right You know, sometimes I forget you're a lefty, Bob. Mm-hmm. How hot you're running right now around? Feels like 105 or so. 105, okay. I can't tell. What's the machine on? The machine's on 97. About 97 right now. And then right about there is where I like to go ahead and rest, go ahead and rest the cup and just take walk a walk. Through. So let me cup oh, right yeah. there. I went ahead Ooh, and... Good tying, bro. Looking slick. 
I went ahead and uh, did that dip the tungsten thing because I'm good at it. See? Yeah. I, I'm <laughs> getting better, you know. Always, man. Always. Ready? Now I see that you have that landing on there. It's still burning. The wall is really good. So I'm kind of wanted to get past one more little spot here. Yeah. And now I want to go ahead and try to walk this cup. It's flowing in there for sure. There's something about me resting the cup on here and walking and feeding it on the inside. It just feels more comfortable to me. I can relax. Closing up a little bit. Yeah. Actually, I'm closing up a lot. You want to turn it up some more? No. As long as you're breaking down those walls, you are fine. There you go. I can come at it at a different angle over here. You just kind of got my spot in a weird spot. Juice me up with a piece of filler wire over there, my brother. Gotcha. I'll rest my hand over here and I'll come at it at a different angle. Thank you. Go for it. So part of that was kind of another little technique that we can get into here in a second and we can yeah. talk about it as well. So when that tightened up over there on my side with that fit, um, what I was doing was actually pushing and rotating on the wire. Yeah. And to me, you know, again, I couldn't see it as well, but it felt like it was going in. Exactly. And I'm kind of doing the same thing here. I get up here on top and it's more of a, a lay wire type. Yeah, lay wire type. Yeah, because gravity plays. Right. And then, you know, you know and you're in 5G, uh, you got to speed up. Yeah, most definitely. Otherwise, you're going to leave big old hangy down thing. Yeah, most definitely. And there you go. Hey, man. Slick in there. Looks nice to me. Beautiful. Like it? Did it go in there good? Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. Went in there. Real Real good. good. Got to get the old flashy light in there. <laughs> You know, we're doing a lot of stuff in position. You got to leave that window in there. But yeah. you know, when you're on bottom, you can't leave those. Exactly. Can't leave an edge. That's like the worst repair. Exactly. You had some videos on repairs. I mean, that was that was slick information. I appreciate that. The Thank cold you. wire, the uh, cold wire, black suck. diffusion, uh, suck back. Yeah. And uh, that is good stuff. Yes, sir. Yeah. Because those, you know, when you get down here. Those are tough repairs. Mm -hmm. This stuff up here is easy, you know, mm -hmm. because you, again, you got that gravity exactly, thing. But, exactly. Man, when you got to grind out down on oh, bottom, yeah. I've it's seen. A, hey, I've seen pain. guys grind out a perfectly good weld up here to stick the wire all the way down, yeah. so they can get that reinforcement in there. Exactly. Otherwise, when you know, when you come right up to the good part, you make your repair. You leave that little pucker mark in there, and it's sunk in. Exactly. Reshoot the X-ray. What do you got? It's still sunk in. Mm -hmm. So. That was really good information. That was a good that. video. Thank you. So, you know, again, we've got two different styles going on here. I still can't get my light right. <laughs> oh. It's in there, Bob. Ah. I think it looks great, you know. The so. old man can still weld a little bit. <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, you know, you guys are straight through all the time. I've taken a couple months off here and been traveling quite a bit. So I'm, you know, you gotta keep that hand eye. Anyway, I went ahead and finished my whole half, you know, again, you know, you, you're hanging on to it, you do the three finger thing. To me, it's always been comfortable and quick where I just rested a thumb 
you know, until yeah. I got up to a little bit. Actually, I, I was clear up here because I had to get past the uh, fit there, or whatever. But I'll come up off there a little bit. Actually, switch hands. Mm -hmm. You know, I, it's that bottom. It's you, that bottom. You've got to have that confidence. You, you know, and that's the deal. And the how many times? Sure. How many times have you started out on bottom and it's like you strike the arc and you camp out and you camp out and mm -hmm. nothing's happening nothing's you know happening. and then what happens you get instant porosity yeah, exactly. it's exactly. like you got a couple of seconds hit it and go get your pool started mm -hmm. get that tie in and get that mm -hmm. bead started Start going to town. and that's why i will come up a couple of inches on the bottom switch hands and come off the other side a little bit come back over here and probably finish this whole side but so you know to me i'm resting the thumb on there i come up a little bit and then I'll just walk the cup the rest That's of the, the way. way out. Okay, That's so way you know my side had the root face mm -hmm. at about one sixteenth, and I think I was well less amperage than you were. It's funny how that played out, isn't it? I know, and uh, we both we're both getting reinforcement. Exactly. We'll, we'll get we'll reach in there and shoot some B roll. Yes, sir. So we still have your bridge tack on this side, which I will gladly take out for you, my brother. Oh, brother. I but I want to, you know what? Here, you set you set yourself back yes, up with the gas exactly. lens. I'll grab the face the face shield. Now, now uh, keep this in mind, guys and girls. Uh, he had a root face, okay? He was running around 95 to 100 amps max, okay? Me, I was running at 110 amps with no root face. With the feathered edge. With the feathered edge, okay? So you might be thinking to yourself, okay, so if he has a feathered edge, he has to run colder mm -hmm. well you know if he has a landing he has to run hotter so it's funny how that played out so and that's, a lot of times you do and I mean you know you recognize things you know by position there's a lot of times when I feel really comfortable I'm looking from the top oh, side yeah, I'm actually seeing the seeing arc everything. and the pool mm -hmm. at the same time the rod and everything is this well, one right? I didn't feel too confident so I had to kind of get down there with it and ride that's it fine. out but you know and then you get up here and go so I did have that one spot that was actually narrow over yeah, here. Yeah, I seen that. Yeah. You know, and then I so that that in itself presents yet another little technique of the the lay wire type thing, where it's just kind of laying in there until I got past it, and then I shot the wire back up here exactly. from the inside. Exactly. So, let me grab that face shield and grinder, and I'll get you prepped I'll up, get brother. Set up here, brother. Appreciate you. You gonna work some more magic for me here, brother? Yes, sir. We see you coming off there, heating up that leading edge. Mm -hmm. Did you uh, feather that? Yes, sir. I feathered it. Okay. Because I remember taking the bridge tack out. I didn't touch it. I didn't know if you wanted it. To, uh, if you're just going to remelt. You're running about 90 amps there, brother. Yeah, right now I am. Yeah. Right now I am. You know why I turned it down? Hmm. The pipe's hot. Oh, pipe you, oh hot. you turned the machine down. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't, I wasn't. I stepped away for just a second there. You went ahead and turned down. Yeah, the pipe gets superheated. That makes a big difference. I think a lot of viewers need to know that too, especially like when you go to throw a cap on and you gotta let things cool off a little bit if you want it to weld most the same. Most definitely, most definitely. Because if you don't, it'll come back at you. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. There he goes. Oh, you're taking a little walk now, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah. You know why? Because your fingers got hot. My fingers got real hot. All right now I'm about to tie in. I guess I got to warm this up real good. Now when I tie in, I like to warm it up tying real good right here. Uh oh. You keep on going past it, don't you? 
Yes, sir. Yep. So you made a nice transition in here on the inside. Yes, sir. Up right up. And you kept going past where I quit by three quarters of an inch. Mm -hmm. I think that's a lot, you know, a lot, I've seen a lot of people do that. Yeah. They come right up and they bump in, they think they're done. Yeah. And so, you know, look at my fist. Got a couple, got a little void canyon in there. Yeah. And that's what their root does too. Yeah. And then they wonder, God, how did I do that? You know, me, I like to go up, if it's a tack or a tie-in like that, I come up around it. And then I start heating the whole thing up where it's like a hole, mm -hmm. back up, add wire, keep going exactly. and, and lace on through it. And it tends to make that good blend and transition in there, which you did. A little slight bump at the top, but hey, you know what? Yeah. Everything is within tolerance. Oh, yes, sir. So, you know, that little bitty variation is way better mm -hmm. than leaving that void exactly. in there. So, exactly. all right, so, you know, let's, let's, uh, let's regroup on this thing. Let's talk about it. You had no root face. You had feathered edge on feathered your edge. side. You come up off guys. of there Thank rolling out it. about 110 amps. At uh, first. Yeah. At Early, first, at first, 110 at first. Amps, I came in behind back. you. I had the root face on my side mm -hmm. about one sixteenth. I switched back up, came in here, same size wire, but I was actually welding a little cooler mm -hmm. than you were amperage wise. Amperage -wise. I think I was down like what 90, 95, 90, 95, 100 max. Okay. It was going up and down, up and down. A I was little bit. I had, you know, again, and so we both have reinforcement. You know, we're well, this thing is both. It's in there on it's both in sides. It's in there in both ways. So and so, you know, I've re, both of us have read viewer comments. We were talking about this yes, at dinner last definitely. night. You know, sometimes we get dogged, and I understand shops, as far their as far as their procedure, they're saying, you know, hey, we get, we do feathered edge here. We don't do <clears throat> any root face at all on TIG piping, and that's cool. I understand that, but mm -hmm. man, for people to say that's the only way to do that's it. That's the only way. Yeah. That's, There's that's, so many other ways of doing things. There is. There's there so is. Many other so, ways of doing things. you know, I kind of I did my boiler thing, and, you know, we were under the ASME mm -hmm. boiler codes at Hartford Insurance Company. The dude comes in and looks at every piece of film. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, if it's passing, if it's doing like this, mm -hmm. then it's good. It's good. You know, as long and, as it shoots, man. You know, and I'm, part of our procedure was, you know, we'd come in here and do a, uh, a fill pass, and we'd do. Uh, MIG fill and cap. That mm -hmm. was part of our, our our procedure. So, you know, the last thing is you leave a thin root in there, and you come back in with a with another. Like you have to go straight to low hydrogen. Mm -hmm. What's the worst thing that can happen? Oh, it's gonna blow through or suck, suck back. Yeah, that is the is. worst. So that's why we like to get that reinforcement. I think these camera guys need to get in here and yeah. get some B-roll of this. Check out the that was fun, pass, man. Was I, fun. I always enjoy welding. I always learn stuff off of you, man. This, you, your uh, your weld tube channel is like got some super good intel yeah. on here. Thank I think the, the the procedures and the fabrication part of it, this, the code quality stuff. That's what that's where it's at. It's where the money's at. So anyway. But, uh, Good stuff. We need to we need to dial up here and do some other stuff. I always like this comparison of techniques. Yes, most you know? definitely. And I think it's very interesting. It's very interesting, you know, because uh, like they say, they try to bash. Sometimes, you know, no landing, landing. I prefer this. I prefer that. Right. But we just tested it, me and you. And yeah. uh, the camera guys are gonna come in here right now. They're gonna show you the inside and. It came out. It came out good, man. Yeah. So, all good right, stuff, man. I appreciate you. Yeah. All right. Love you. you. So uh, we showed a technique here, two different techniques of, of your style, my style, my fit, your fit and exactly. everything. And part of mine, I got into a deal where I just had to do a little, I mean, I was kind of forced to do a little lay wire, closed up a little bit. Of course, of Today, course. we're gonna bring Mr. Mike Beecher in and he's gonna show What's us that on, exact brother? technique. That's his preference, he likes to do that. So uh, again, feathered edge, no face. Mm -hmm. And yes, you have tightened your gap up to like a loose 332, just barely an eighth. You're, yep. you're not, you're not able to put the wire in there. Correct. Yes, okay. Sir. So this is like your preferred method. Yes, sir. And so uh, 
same setup, same amperage. No, wait a minute. You change. You're you're down to. Uh, you're going to go at 95 amps. Yep. All okay. the way 95. Yep. No less. No higher. Might depends what the puddle is going to do. Okay. If it's keyholes, okay. I'm going to back out a little bit. All right. Flows through. All okay. Right. So, so this will be interesting. We'll see. I mean, this is again yet another contrast of another style here. Exactly. So, uh, we're getting ready to fire up. Let's do it. All right. Let's do it to do it, it, man. Mike, that's like automatic, man. You're just kind of, kind of rolling along, breaking the walls yeah. down. Now he's running at 95 amps. Yeah, it's not had, going any higher, not any less. Yeah, has been all the way. Yeah. Now these are other people's preferences as well, you know. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, whatever works for you. I think this is a good way to, to, start, to off. Uh, start out. Yeah, start off, yes. Because on plate, you start off with TIG on plate uh, in the 1G yeah, position. Absolutely. Especially, uh, especially 2G, the mm. horizontal, that's like everybody's yes. least favorite and they fight it. And what get, is it called? Horrible zonal? Ho horrible zonal, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But that's like the cool way to learn it because, yeah. you know, you get comfortable, you get comfortable walking, you just kind of roll up in there and lightly put yep. the filler wire in the groove all the time. All the time, yep. That's correct. Now, the only thing I notice about this technique and fit up is it, to me, it just kind of lays in mm -hmm. a little flat. Yeah. I mean, the reinforcement. Yeah, it lays in a little. So you got to be careful when you do your hot pass because right. it might suck back, but... Then again, some people like to turn it up maybe five, yeah, maybe ten. Spend more time. Spend more in time there. in there. Spend more so time in the go. bevel face. Exactly. Instead of right <coughs> in the middle, uh, middle of the weld, suck it back. Tied in pretty good up top. There you go. Sweet. Kind of like automatic. Automatic. Just roll it up in there. I noticed he was hanging on to that filler wire with his yeah. thumb, and I do that a lot. Me, just sit mm -hmm. there and just fly. So. So did you, you had a tack over here that you rolled right through. Did you, had had you feathered those edges or um, filed them or what did yeah, you do to? I usually to... file the edges. Okay. And then when I'm coming into it, I basically angle my filler wire a lot towards me. All right. Okay. And I'm basically going in slow and make sure I'm like uh, pushing the filler wire into the uh, root. Okay. And like then pause when I'm coming on to the tack. Okay. And try just... to get it is, there, in is there a certain degree on your, on your rod angle? Like when you're coming from I'm going like, bottom. yeah, when I start approaching the tack, I come in and come up. Um, oh, I got you. Tack, okay. But when gotcha. I'm laying it, I lay a lot of angle, oh, okay. but not too much angle. Not but too much. In there, it you don't slide off out of through. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting for sure. Nice. Quick, simple. Yet another way to do it. Yeah, there's you know? another way. You know, so there's three ways. Land, no land, lay wire. Yeah. Back feeding, lay wire. You know, it's Fit. whatever. Yeah, so exactly. many variables. Mm -hmm. And, you know, once again, you get in the field, uh, what are you going to get? You know, you, you're not going to get the same fit all the uh, time. That is you're the never going to get the same fit. You got variations in cut. Mm -hmm. Some of them are nice and straight. Some exactly. of them are kind of wavy, like the old French fry carrot thing mm -hmm. looking at, you know. I mean, you just get all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So, got to keep an open mind. I really like that for, for that quick, simple. Yep. You know, get used to TIG, get used to that amperage. Yes. I thought that was a, I thought that was a good run. Thank right. you, Mike. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. Yeah, yeah that you. was, that was fun. I'll definitely Thank do you. it again. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you, man. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, guys. All right. Hoping we're finding this educational. Please stay current with the, uh, with the channel and everything. Subscribe to Weld.com. Subscribe to Weld Two. Two. Yeah. Subscribe. Uh, check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Thank you.